So I have to re-ink fountain pens, but I also just got diamine inks and I want to swatch them. So the diamine inks were purchased based off of people's recommendations for what to put in my Parker and my Schaefer. This is also the first video that I'm trying out a new microphone, so I hope the audio is okay. Um, let me know if it's not, and I will ditch the mic and go back to how I normally do videos. So I ended up getting three dye mine inks because they came as a set. The set was Aurora Borealis, Celadon Cat, and Earl Grey. Celadon Cat and Earl Grey were the colors I wanted. I like matching my ink and my pens. It makes me happy. And the Waterman I have is very much like a silvery gray pen, and I think it'll look great with Earl Grey. And the Schaefer I have is the gray version. But it is quite blue and I think it'll look quite good with Celadon Cat. So I'm not inking them up today, mostly because I need practical pens in my everyday carry case right now. And I am down to, I think two, maybe three if I include the one that's hard starting, uh, pens that have ink. But start with I need to swatch up to new colors and I need to figure out how I'm splitting up my color row rings because I'm officially out of space in my first one and I'm now at the point I'm needing two so oh it's so tight aha I need, I need three of these. For now, I'm just going to actually slot them in on the other ring. Because three cards won't make a huge difference, but I am at some point going to need to split them up properly. So, we are going to start with Aurora Borealis, which I don't actually think I like the color of. I think it's too green. For what I like in an ink, but it was part of the set, and so I got it anyways. Just the two I want. Uh, let's fold this. Let's fold this in thirds, actually. wipe off the drip. There we go. So those are Aurora Borealis. And I do still think it leans a bit too green for me. It reminds me of uh what is it? Bluegrass velvet, which I have had in a pen but is not my favorite color. I tend to lean more towards like the grays and the pastellis. Um, which is why I'm looking for a bottle of storied blue. Though Celadon Cat seems like it might be pretty similar. And I dipped way too much of it. Um, it's more green than storied blue, but I'd say it falls in the same, like, color family. Clearly I have this mat for a reason. Uh, the last time I swatched inks, I dumped an entire sample bottle. This is so incredibly full. It is full to here. So there is definitely a fill difference in these bottles. 
Aurora Borealis is about here, but Earl Grey is much more full. I think I had a plan for what I was going to ink up, but I think that might change. Uh, maybe not. Earl Grey might be too black for what I want right now. Not that it isn't a brilliant gray. We'll see how it dries. Everything could change as these dry. Let's see. Do I still have... Yes, I do. So this is what has been inked up in my pens. I've had a carousel in medium with story blue, which is currently being cleaned. I had a Jinhao with an architect nib in Madame Mulberry. It's currently being cleaned. My Jinhao with the bent nib uh, with riveting pond in it is hard starting, but still technically has ink in it. So I don't know if I'll clean it or not. My Quaco still has dust and bloom and my Parker still has Madame Mulberry in it. Neither of these two are going to change. The Parker always gets Madame Mulberry. The Quaco always gets dust and bloom. I don't think I need to re-ink the Quaco. I think I might need to re-ink the Parker. And then I have a pen that is going to get the black waterproof ink because I finally found, I was searching through a whole bunch of reviews and I found one that actually mentioned that they bought it because it was a good dupe if you get like the 0 0.05 fine liners but you wanted something reusable it was the best dupe they'd found and so i bought one off of amazon and it's pretty similar i would say like they're pretty pretty similar um and so i'm going to ink it with waterproof ink and try it out for a little bit the one issue with my waterproof ink vials is that they are two mil vials and with my very shaky hands, I find them really hard to use. So I'm going to save it for last, but I think so we have Madame Mulberry. And dusk and bloom. Yeah, sell it on cat goes. So sell it on cat is going to go in something. Does it does go? Do I want it in something though? Okay, let's figure out what I'm actually gonna ink. I'm going to ink this that I got for Christmas. There's the Parker, there's the, this has ink in it. It just, some's evaporated, and so it's got an air bubble. Um, this is what's getting black. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has six spots. And the Quaco technically lives in my purse. So I still have spots for two more pens. <laughs> okay. Two more pens. What I can ink. What do I want to ink? So something's getting Celadon Cat. Something's getting black. What am I putting in the new Ferris Real Press pen? <sighs> do I want to put Malibu Blush? Really? I want to put strawberry macaron, but I'm afraid that it won't swatch the same. Like it won't be dark enough. I did have pink eraser and things for a while. I am leaning towards Malibu blush. Malibu blush. 
grab a bottle of Madam Mulberry. There's dust and bloom. There's dust and bloom. What's that? Oh, Peter Moss. Um, Riveting Pond doesn't need more ink. This is my waterproof black. Just need to get rid of the air bubble. So, I have... Do I want to ink anything else up? So that gives me... Do I need a neutral? Do I want to put Earl Grey into something? Thing is, I love Peter Moss. It just doesn't go with my pastel color palette currently. Oh, I still need to find a pen for Celadon Cad. Ah, uh, do I have a nib that can go in the 82 right now? I think all my feeds might be getting ink. They are. All right. So theoretically, a feed could go in that. Or I could just ink the other parka. The black parka could be... Black parka could be diamine or a gray. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Five. And then I put, I have a, the brush pen. Do I want to ink it? Do I want to ink it right now? Really, I want to ink my architect, but. I'm not going to remember to ink it later on this week. So instead, sell it on cat is going to go in there. Great. So now I have a plan. Plans are fantastic. This is diamond. And gray. We are going to start with inking. We're going to start with start with getting rid of that. We don't need that. We're going to get rid of this for now, purely because I'm saving it for last. It's going to make a giant mess. We're going to start with this. So this is a Jinhao 82, and I absolutely love it. It's got a bent nib. I use it all the time for titles. The issue is it doesn't have a great seal somewhere, and so it has a pretty big evaporation issue. Um, so there you go. Actually, didn't make a mess. I think that's the first time I used it and it hasn't made a mess. So, that is pen number one going in the case. I tend to only have one, sometimes two shimmer pens inked up at a time. I used my fountain pen so much for day to day writing that it just doesn't make sense to have a whole bunch of shimmer pens inked up. The Quaco Sport, I think, is fine. Yeah, great. Um, it's my bag pen. It lives in my purse. I love it. It's in mellow blue. Um, I love the aluminum versions. I don't want the price tag for them. Though I did see somebody who ran theirs over with a forklift this week on Reddit. And if that like isn't a stamp of approval for a Quaco in aluminum, 
like the nib was still fine the body still unscrewed the only thing that was damaged was the cap like if that isn't a stamp of approval for an aluminum quaco i don't know what is let's re-ink step first so i love madame mulberry ink so much i have two bottles of it this is a bottle i bought from a store who was uh, no longer doing samples of it, and so it was cheap. Um, and then this is my red Canadian Parker. I have two Parkers. Oh yeah, that is, it is empty. There's something. So satisfying about filling a Parker. I probably only have to totally re-ink this pen every couple months. I do clean it pretty frequently. Like I clean the nib every couple weeks but I think the last time I did a total clean of the pen was back in October so the next time it's due to be re-inked I'll clean it totally um but it always just gets ink it's the same color which I tend to do with all of my vintage pens though I haven't found the perfect fit for this black Parker I got it at Scriptus um And unlike my first Parker, it has like a slightly, like the, the feed is like slightly out more. I don't know if that's just a difference in the models. Um, one is Canadian and one's American. But like it still writes quite nicely. So I just live with the fact that like it looks a little bit different. Um, I love filling Parkers. Maybe not with an ink bottle this far. But... Feels like a disaster waiting to happen with an ink bottle this far. We're gonna live with a dab full. There's still an air pocket in the sack, but I would rather not spill ink everywhere on my desk, personally. Um, been there, done that. Would rather not do it again. So, two Parkers. There is, I should do a video comparing them. Like, there is a pretty noticeable difference. They're both. I think they're both Parker 21s. One's Canadian, one's American. The Canadian one is longer and pointier. The American one is shorter and fatter. I like the feather finial on the Canadian one. Um, I like both of them. Like they're both lovely pens, but I think the Canadian has one has my heart. It might also be because it was my first Parker. <laughs> Um. Here we are. Two die marks, watches down. And I'm going to leave the. I'm going to label it now.
I know that the dye mine inks come in much larger bottles, but I personally know that I'm going to struggle to use 30 mils of the ink and that it would just be wasteful to get an 80 mil bottle for me. And so I decided to go with getting the 30 mil size. Also, I was able to get it as a set and get two colors that I really wanted and one that I'm like sort of mad about, but I'm sure I will be able to find a home for it. Malibu blush is up next. So this is the Fluttering Hearts pen. This was the Ferris Real Press pen last year. I don't think they've announced this year's color yet. Um, based on the fact that last year's Pantone color, or that this year's Pantone color is peach, and last year's was light pink, like I doubt. It will be Pantone themed. But I'm so interested to see what it ends up being like. Really, I should know that by now, but like, he is just So this is my first fully aluminum or metal pen, and I do really like it. It sort of made the desire for the all aluminum koi go a bit more intense. <laughs> survive. Celadon Cat is up next and then we are going to use my least favorite sample vials. I know people complain about the Ferris wheel press ones but like as somebody with shaky hands at least the Ferris wheel press ones like have a little bit of weight to them. The two mil ones are so thin and so skinny and have absolutely no weight to them and I just am constantly making a mess with them. And I didn't get this fully submerged. Alright. Sell it on cat. And we've got one left. And I will, once everything's inked, I will write with all of them. Oh, okay. There is a size difference between those two. So this is my favorite black ink. It's the Sailor Black Pigment ink. 
the thing about it is you really have to dedicate a pen to it. And I hadn't found one that had a thin enough nib until I came across somebody talking about this pen and more specifically the fact that it was the closest they'd found to the nib of a 0 0.05 pen. So I picked one up, I tested it out. It is shockingly close. I chose it in the rainbow color because I figured that even if I didn't like, if, even if it wasn't a perfect fit, like size wise, at least it would be in like a more unique color than like a all black one or the silver one. That being said, it actually works for what I needed to work for. And so I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to test it for the next couple weeks as sort of a black fine liner and see if I can get away with using it instead of the pen I use all the time. Mostly because those pens are now shockingly expensive. I think it's between like five and a half and seven dollars for one of those pens now, depending on where I get them. And they only last six to eight weeks, if I'm lucky. So I need a better solution and I'm hoping that this is it. So I going from these. And I spilled ink. And I've made a mess. Like, these vials are just not, they're not my friend. One air bubble. Okay. Well, if there was any question about how permanent this permanent black is, it has stained the rainbow nib. So, like, maybe the all black version would have been smarter. Um, but I wanted something fun in case it didn't work what I wanted it to. Um, my hands are so stained at this moment. But that actually was probably the neatest fill I've ever had from one of those ink bottles. So the like little tray idea that I stole from somebody on Reddit, that's actually for test tubes, actually works quite well. Um, so we're just gonna go through everything and like have a little play. This is I don't know what brand it is. I will at some point update the description of this video and leave what brand of pen it is. Um, this is, seems to be shaking. All the shimmers on one side. I love this pen. It's such a fun pen. Um, and I think it's the cheapest way to get a bent nib is on one of these pens if you're wanting to try it. This is... FWP. Okay. 
and bank. This is FWP. I don't know, it's Park or something. Um, but I got it off of Facebook Marketplace and I've never actually figured out what it is. So I'm going to call it Parker Red. That's how I'm going to differentiate the two Parkers, which is pretty much how I differentiate the two Parkers. Mm -mm. I think it's probably, this is probably a medium and this is probably a fine, just based on the fact that that's an extra fine. This is um, all gray, black. This is FWP. That doesn't look right. Uh, blush. Fine. What is a fine? This is Joyman. Oh, what color is this? This is Sell It On Cat. Medium. And then this is my pocket pen. This is FWP, Dusk in Bloom, uh, and Medium. So like clearly Medium is a favorite nib size for me. I do like fine and extra fine, and I am a fan of a fun size of nib. So normally on top of having a bent nib, I also have an architect nib in this. Or a stub, but it's another Jin Hao 82. And while I've got the body of the 82, all the nibs are currently drying. And I do have other nibs that go in the feeds, but the feeds are attached to the nibs that are currently drying, and the feeds are wet as well. So for now, it's going to be like a little stretch of more practical nibs, but fun colors. I sort of wish I had chosen a darker pink, just like going with the rest of the colors. This pink's a bit too light, but I don't know if I have a pink that's like moody enough to fit in with everything else. And it does go quite nicely with the pen's body. Um, I'm also unsure about dye mine Earl Grey. I don't know that I needed it. I think I would have rather chosen something more fun but I'm interested to try out the two dye mine colors for the next little stretch and see how I like them I don't know that this pocket pen will ever be anything other than Ferris Wheel Press Dusk and Bloom mostly because it's just my favorite go-to color for like easy to read practical writing that's still a fun shade same with Madame Mulberry um, they've both been pretty constant and inked up in pens for a couple months now. Madame Mulberry since the summer at some point, and then uh, Ferris Wheel Press Dusk and Bloom since Scriptus. I've had this pen since Scriptus, and that's all this pen has ever had in it. 
and this pen has been ink since stripped us so yeah that is what we're using for the next little stretch i'm hoping to be able to get a bottle of this sailor ink i'm on a restock list but i haven't been notified that it's back in stock yet and i can't find it anywhere other than wonder pens um and i don't want to buy more sample vials because clearly they're not my friends to use like i'm okay with the five mil ones that get four mils of ink like those work pretty well like i've got enough space and they've got a larger footprint like they're harder to tip like they're still tippy but they're harder to tip and they fit perfectly into the tray so they don't move as much but these little ones are not they're not my friend so hopefully i'll be able to find a replacement shortly other than that though I think I'm pretty well set. I've significantly less ink on my hands than I thought I'd have. And unlike last time, I didn't spill an entire sa entire sample vial of ink, which has to be considered a win. Because <laughs> that was a bit of a disaster. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Let me know if you would have changed which pens you inked or which colors. I find that I'm much more picky with my fountain pen inks. I've got such a large collection of watercolors, and yet when it comes to fountain pen inks, at least when I'm buying them for myself, like I'm much more selective than when it comes to watercolors, which I find quite interesting. Um, it's just, it's in weird to see how the, like, the two different hobbies are approached. So my collection of inks grows with every new Ferris wheel press release thanks to Jubilee. I am branching out though like there's dye mine inks now there's some from other brands there's a lot of samples from other brands but the dye mine and the script is showing I think are my first full bottles from other brands so I'm trying new things though I do these two are still no, nothing has come close to beating Ferris Will Press Dusk and Bloom and Madame Mulberry as my favorite colors to have in pens. So hopefully, well, I've got <laughs> got two thirty-eight mil bottles of Dusk and Bloom of Madame Mulberry, and Dusk and Bloom only goes in my Quaco, so I think I'm gonna have a stash of them for a while. Luckily, well, I think is where we end thank you for watching um yeah i like having all my pens sort of inked up that i use i try to keep it's more than normal i try to keep it between like four and five but because i want to try a new black and the dye in my inks but i also like want the stuff that i know i'll use it's a bit more than i normally have but I think that's will still be fine. So thanks for watching. Let me know what inks you would add to the collection. Let me know what pens I should try next. I love this rainbow one. Mostly I just love the color of it and the fact that it like has such a fine tip. So. Thanks for watching.